Hello. There we go. <laughs> Happy Monday, Alan. <laughs> Happy Monday. How's it going? Oh, you know, it's made it through work. Monday, Ness, wild, boring, nothing. <laughs> A little bit of everything. <laughs> An uneventful Monday. Yeah. Good. But work is work, so. Yes. <laughs> so that's good to hear. Hmm. How oh, about good. you? I know I know things have been a little bit chaotic, but uh, like the most I, I filled you in on some of the most I will say is we mm. had to take our cat to the ER last night on his birthday. So, mm. um, yeah, kind of been having to keep an eye on him. So far, he is OK. That's good news. Um, but he, we will need to keep an eye on him for a little bit here. Mm. Um, other than that, <laughs> uh, not great. Not terrible, not awful. Mm -hmm. Um, can check on my berries since I remembered to do that this time. Oh yes. Uh, so if you're joining us, and this is your first time, uh, hello, I'm Pixel, and this is Alhan. This hello. is our soul link, <laughs> Nuzlocke. We have never done one before, and we are at the point where uh, we're going to be, we're inside Victory Road or just about, mm -hmm. and we made a big decision to swap up our team. Um, to try and even out our spread. Yes. Um, but we noticed that at least two Pokemon on each of our teams are half the level mm -hmm. of our others. So we are now uh, in a bit of a training montage right now. Yeah. So uh, right now I, I kind of pulled up my team and my two weak Pokemon that I'm bringing up are the Wizardos and Nidonite. Uh, Wizardos isn't that far behind, but his stat wise, he's going to be making up some ground. Uh, the Nino Knight is has actually come a long way already. Um, he's already up to 27, but uh, still long way to go with that. And those are going to patch a few holes that I had floating in my party. And because this is Soul Link, of course, that means that uh, um, that means that our Pokemon have to match with the exact ones that match on the other side. And yes. uh, uh, which once... means, uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got my Nita Knight, which is a Nita Arena, mm -hmm. um, and she's a little behind at a uh, 26. Just kind of was the nature of where we caught them. It, there is some wild level disparities in those areas. Right. So she's getting up there. And then the other one that's filling the gap is Wizardos, who's very quickly um, filling his role of what mm -hmm. he needs to do. Mm -hmm. uh, bonus points is the fact that we in order to make the randomizer work we have to make it where all pokemon have hm capabilities so uh yes gyarados knows fly so that's nice yep that's definitely a bit of a helper there we for the most part we've tried to stay on brand with what uh would make sense to the pokemon but there's oh every now and then you hit that point of y you can't I mean, get around sometimes it you just gotta have it be funny though I, exactly I mean, Having it where you had a trap inch that could fly was hilarious. <laughs> he just got angry and launched himself. <laughs> Pretty much, he just held onto the feet. Mm -hmm. And then I had my Psyduck that I, that could fly for a while there. Yes. Yep. Okay, yeah, time to go get there. Apricorns. Yep, I'm going to Kurt, and then I'm going to quickly uh, head up to Ecruti oh, and grab the few there. First, yep. yeah, that's actually smart. First. Yeah. Um, I know we also puzzled on doing the dark tunnel, which I can pull up the map. I think I sent you the link actually last time. I believe you did. I actually kind of forgot about uh, the dark tunnel being a thing. Not that it, not that's a bad thing, but there we go. Um, so dark cave was, ha will yeah, have a bunch yeah. of items for us and uh. Right now, we're kind of looking for any anything helps. We're not in huge trouble, but uh, kind of the uh, kind of the the golden goose here that we're trying to hunt down is a uh, is an upgrade disc for uh, for Pixel. Because right, because we random not only just the Pokemon, but items as well, including yes. the HMs or not the HMs, the TMs, TMs. and everything mm. and which the tm randomization ended up kind of being a big mistake in a lot of ways yeah the yeah. item randomization didn't hurt nearly as much if anything that was it's always kind of funny not great i don't know if i would do it again mm -hmm. I, I think i might just keep items and tms as they are yeah um 
But yes, this being not being able to evolve my Porygon because we made it also where if you just have the corresponding item, you don't have to do the trade. Right. It just has to hold it and then evolve once. Mm -hmm. or, that's uh, level that's up once. a feature with the randomizer. Uh, since once once everything's randomized, that can cause issues with trades and all that kind of fun stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it gives us access to tradable Pokemon without um, not necessarily tradable Pokemon in the sense of Pokemon we can't get in our version, but like more you're not locked out of Pokemon of, that you like a Machamp kind of deal. Right. Yeah. Oh, no matches at the uh, at the Lotto today. Dang. Worth a shot. Okay. Yeah, so um so the plus side of doing dark cave is that we're gonna be able to get uh get a handful of items, especially since we didn't we kind of completely skipped it due to not having flash. Flash unfortunately Which isn't a in yeah, it's a TM and not an HM in this game. So you only get one flash through the entirety of of this game. Uh and, there's and no more so with the randomization. We'll get it either. Exactly. So somewhere sitting somewhere is some TM that we didn't grab that has flash, which Maybe. doesn't help us. <laughs> okay, so there's that. So was it we decided we were going to go train for a little and then do the dark cave or was it dark cave and then train? Let's let's do dark cave and then train so that we kind of okay. know we kind of get as far into dark cave as we're intending to and then we can kind of go from there probably. Okay, so I'm going to fly towards Excuse the me. road. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, if you check your messages, I sent you the map in yep. that. I've got it pulled up here, and it's uh, the one you have specifically is the one for Blackthorn. So I'm going to fly up to Blackthorn and start there. Okay. I will also so do that. So in, uh, in Gold Silver, Dark Cave is a more interesting cave than in... Uh, uh, than a lot of the ones in, uh, you know, classic red and blue. Uh... Dark Cave actually connects three different places, including far north into this high level area. Uh, the downside is, for the most part, Dark Cave is uh, very low level. It's a lot of like level twos and threes, so repels will yeah, probably be, I'm gonna put be on, used. I, I might get a couple more repels here if I can. Also, I think we need strength. So if we uh, so I, I think we have that. I'm quickly I, double checking. I do. OK, I should. Let me I, just. Uh, yeah, make sure. And that's kind of what keeps dark uh, that keeps dark cave from being accessible in the low levels. It'll, it'll you can get to one or two places in the low level areas, go. but uh, um, but you can't get to the to the Blackthorn entrance before you have strength. So, right. Um, do I got escape ropes? Yes, I'm there. Good there. Let's get a couple more extra pills. Yeah, so we should be able to get, uh, it looks like there's uh, about five items just sitting in Pokeballs on the Blackthorn entrance here. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I misread that. There are going to be uh, two, uh, two Pokeballs in the Blackthorn entrance. And then if we take it all the way to the, um, to the main Violet entrance, there are five Pokeballs through there. But it looks like we got some Rock Smashes too that we need to do. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to double check. Yeah, I, think I don't think I have a rock I smasher. I think my Sentian does. No, okay. it's got rock throw. I can teach it to Oregon if I have to. I don't want you to have to do that, but otherwise, yeah, we can always go through the Route 45 entrance, which doesn't look like to have any rock obstructions. Okay of any kind we would just have to backtrack which that's not terrible right and i'm currently on okay oh so the route 45 is the is the main one here the route 46 is the low level entrance way down south so we're at 45. oh okay okay perfect that makes a lot more sense all right in we go okay Okay, so let's see. I see a still. Okay, cool. Yep, Route 45 entrance. Yep. So put on that item finder. And 
hang a left. Mm hmm. Yeah, there are some okay ish Pokemon. These are like 20 somethings and mine's a 20. Okay. So. Okay, so that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I'm going to start by crossing this. Oh, a star you. I'm going to start by crossing this water here south and getting to that, uh, to that one down there. Okay, I will also head in that direction. Ooh, Rapid Spin does 20. Nope, I does not do 20 HP. I kind of thought it did, but there we go. Are you trying to ch to swoo <laughs> to woo my woman? Absolutely. My female Pokemon, you uh, <laughs> you horrid <laughs> snobble, you. Hey, you know I got hey. away with the ladies. <laughs> hey. What's the lady gotta do to get <laughs> to get some licking around here? Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, Meanwhile, standing in the corner, the lickitung is just very much keeping its mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> That's me in the corner. <laughs> That's me in the snub light. <laughs> Fighting with a mag <laughs> Yeah, because when does your uh, shouty boy evolve at? He, he should evolve at 40, so I'm kind of uh i'm kind of giving him a bit of a uh a bit of focus right now but okay same with yeah my need arena we kind of need her to get up there a decent amount yes i can't remember what the exact level was but i think it's once she hits toxic spikes is when it's gonna be a good time to evolve her okay uh so i need to be up on the other side of that water which actually i'm gonna go do quick because it's right here Oh, a seal. Dugong. That's a, dugong. That's a big old dugong. Mm -hmm. We're going to supersonic this one. Ooh, ice shard. That's all. Right, that's that's basically the quick attack of ice moves, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. Okay, we're switching to biting now. You, were, you asked for this. <laughs> and stomp. There we go. I would have left, but like, I was so close to just pinging. I'm like, please, just. You die. might as well. Like, you're you're a bay leaf. I like you, but you are so weak to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just need you dead. Yep, just take advantage of it. All right, we're gonna put on a repel so I can catch up. Hey, Wizardos, what's your favorite uh, uh, '90s off-Broadway like dance stage show? Oh, you mean Stomp? <laughs> I only not, know the one move. That was not one of my better jokes. Oh, a Reaper Cloth. That'd be great if I had uh, the big uh, ghosty Miss guy. Magus, yeah. Yeah. And uh, what is it? Uh, Dust Skull? Uh, Dust Skull. And I also think it does something if you have the Dream Eater dude. What's the big the big legendary? Dusk Noir? Not Dusk Noir. Oh, oh, um, oh, 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 um, I can picture him. Darkrai. What? Darkrai? Darkrai. That's it. Yeah. Uh, if you go to the left before the water uh, in the okay. little corner, you can get a item there. You might have already oh, gotten it. I, okay. Yeah, I think I got that one. Cool. Okay, I'm heading down to where that Pokemon is down. Okay, heading south. Yeah. And because we're surfing, we should be able to potentially get oh, a 30. PP Max. <laughs> Ooh. That, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Good for those uh, five PP moves, six PP moves. Mm-hmm. So I'm heading around the south area, seeing if yep. I can find anything. Oh, got some kind of radar ping. There you go. One shot. All right, is it in the water? It might be in the water. Another dugong. Sweet. And we'll keep stomping. Yeah, go ahead. Use rest. Here. That's great. Here, go on. Fall asleep. I'll kick you in the face. It's fine. <laughs> Boot to the head. Mm. We got him. Absolutely, we got him. All right. There is definitely something. What run down oh, here? Yeah, I think it's inside this wall here. There is a Pokeball to keep following. Oh, there's one. Sure. Mean look. 
That is not gonna be mean luck. Nope. I get 72. What what are you? And I'm getting so many fights here, but I'm not terribly it upset with okay. it. I mean, if it's stuff that you can fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they're like 23, oh. 24, so they're not the worst. And there is items this way. Okay. Oh, okay, so you're That's already enough. down to the, like the southwest side of this yeah, map, I just right? Took the south. I, I did okay. throw on a. Uh, oh, you used a repel. A repel. Okay, that like, makes I was sense. Starting to get overrun pretty quick. Ooh, Aurora Beam. Let's see how much that's going to do. What does this exit take me to? Okay. Oh. So this takes okay. us to the main tunnel where we had like all the strength spots, I believe. Yes, but it looks like if you hang a left, it'll take you out to route 31, but there's a couple Pokeballs that can be picked up in here. Yeah. So might be worth going back. There is a gentleman. If I go back through here and I keep. Oh, can I not go north? Um, let me check. And that's a big mushroom. OK, so I'd have to go back through. So, yeah, if once you jump those walls, mm -hmm. you kind of have nowhere else to go. Sure. How do we get to that guy? So, if, so if you look on your map, yep. there's a. Oh, I see. You so surf we switch. Yep. Yep, we surf, yep, yep. go around. Yeah, it's kind of a, a bit of a rigmarole, but. All right. So I'm going to at least collect this. These two items down here that I see okay. in the violet entrance one and there's some hidden items it looks like so i'm gonna keep uh keep fighting here real quick and then those of those might be needing to learn uh learn a new move sooner rather than later just because his only real attacking move is stomp so oh that's not good yeah it just needs a little love okay. so i'm getting down here Okay, what's my TM? Earthquake! Hey! Oh, hell yeah, nice. That might be what he's learning. And Macho Brace. Sweet. Okay, so let's see, we are here. And I have made my way to the other map, finally. Okay. So yeah, it's hang a left, it looks like. Uh, So hang a left right away. From yeah, here. hang a do left, and if you go around the top left one, mm -hmm. there's going to be a hidden item near where the Pokeball is that you get. Sure. So, this one's going to be a little tricky. Okay. Okay, level two Shellgon, I will fight this. Thank you for the IVs. <laughs> okay, so I need to go down and this way. Oh, okay. So how do I? Oh, do I have to surf? Oh, and now we're at level three. So now I'm going to put on the repel so I can explore. I'm not even going to waste yeah. the waste the time. Yeah, we're going to put on repel here. This is where it's going to get a little mm -hmm. tough. Uh, okay. Where is that's full heals? Oh, wrong box. So for, yeah, everyone's like, what are you doing? So we have maps up in the other yep. screens, and this is how we have to navigate. Yep. Okay, there we go. Okay, that made me hop over. Perfect. We are not above, there... we're not above cheating in certain ways, uh, <laughs> and Big having bro. maps is one of them. <laughs> okay, so the Pokeball on the left has an item right next to it. Okay. So it's one of the rocks there. And then if you head south, you should another to... Another fossil. Again, we are just going to be swimming in fossils. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's and then up one, and that is a dusk stone. Ooh, I don't think I can use it, but ooh. Okay, and then pokeball, white flute. Damn. Okay, so from here, I want to go down around and oh no, just straight down. down into the right. Yes, yep, just I see that. Right. Okay. And, and then we'll fly back to Blackthorn and try this all again. Another shoal shell, which is kind of nothing. <laughs> that is quite the nothing burger. Yep. And okay, so that's three items here. And then uh, kind of call it there and get out and fly out. Yep. Cool. Going to Blackthorn. 
I could uh, I could use this stop at the poke center. And then um, yeah, I'm gonna try to talk to that guy that's there. He might be of value, mm -hmm. or he might be a very difficult trainer. Who knows? Probably yeah, he probably he's a trainer, but you know that's still a trainer fight. So it's it's weird though. He's like tucked away in a corner at a dead end. Right. And he's the only one in there. Which means he might be giving he might give an item. Right. Other than that, it's uh, we would need the rock smash to get through to the other one. Well, now if we go all the way back through, let's see, down, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, no, we won't need rock smash. If we go back through that route again and you head, after you go through that door way mm -hmm. at the bottom, the, the A one. Yeah. And if you go down in the water instead of to the left, um, there's a strength rock. You mm -hmm. push that and then you just kind of make a U wrap. And as long as you don't go too far, uh, you can grab all the items in there. Sweet. So and after this, everyone, we're just going to jump right into grinding. Yep. So this is the uh, th this is this is the exploratory fun part. So. OK, so I see I'm I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm, I'm already in the cave and I'm going to try yeah. and find the dude. So. OK, so if you go down here, take a you need to get in the water and then follow the north wall and then get off there make, um, make your way back the up. northeast wall yeah follow that yeah and then just stay it along should be that uh, until there's an opening should be item be three finding two green rocks go up there and then just go up it's definitely an item land. okay hit the stairs perfect now we go left Oh, I'm seeing an item. Yep, my repel wore off. Yeah, there's an item, but I think it's kind of up by him. So. Yep. Okay, just gotta be careful. There's no jumps coming up. Not until you go down the stairs. Yes. Yeah. Okay, use protect. See how I can. You know, it, it's always good when a lady <laughs> uses protection. Yeah, but it's it's appreciated. Oh man, she's really protecting them. Yep, yep. No baby. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's happening here, that's for sure. I just really doesn't like it when I give it a stomp. And and to be fair, that does get you arrested in most jurisdictions, so I, I understand. Well, no no one likes it when you give a hard stomp to a moose knuckle. <laughs> Accurate. Okay, so oh, more cloisters. I may have to put on repel so I don't lose track of where I am. Nah, I get ya. That might happen for me too, but it's... The more frustrating thing is just getting into a battle resets the item finder, so I have to pull it back open. I know, that's <laughs> what's irritating me the most. Yep. Because I'm starting to uh, uh, find... Um, hang on to something, and I'm like, oh. Yep, yeah, but it's somewhere around here, yeah. Takedown? All right. And just like that, I've already used half uh, my stomps. Oh. You okay? Yes, as long as I land this bite. Okay. It did a takedown. Gotcha. Okay, trying this again. I made it here. I need to keep going up. Don't go down. Go up. It is behind, just behind the dude in a rock. What's behind him? Yes. So okay. if you go up, go up to him, uh, it is a max repel there. And whoa, you started with me. I have my black glasses on. I didn't notice you at all. What am I doing here? Don't you worry about it. I'll give you a pair of black glasses. Okay. What are they? Power up dark type moves. Uh, let me see what they do if I got anything. Okay. Uh, you I might, might already have a pair. I might already have a pair, so that might actually be some black glasses. Okay. So then I'm gonna quickly. Uh, looks like there might be something still in here though. Yep. Yep. Definitely got black glasses. So. Okay. Where that's going.
I gotta fight. Okay, so I'm not necessarily seeing out. anything else here, so I may start making my way just dead south. Yeah, to that door, and then because mm -hmm. I'm through the door, okay. now I'm just gonna surf downward. So yeah, just go to the corner, surf, uh, like surf to the left just slightly. So you go like there, and then just go mm -hmm. straight down. Perfect. And then there should be a strength rock. Okay. Uh, let me use another repel so I can get there. I think at this point that's fair. Oh yeah. Uh, cause I have six of them yet, so that's not as much of a problem. Good. So there is the breaking rack, and once you're there, go down. And just be careful going down here. Oh. Okay. Oh, there there is stairs. Perfect. Oh, yep, here we go. Alright, one more. It did south. And then Okay, so I am south, and now we head east. Yep. Okay. Yep. You got it. Go, my very, very strong Clefable. It pushes with the legs. It never <laughs> skips leg day. Of course not. Why would All it? All right, I found an awakening. Okay. And then that one's blocked up. Okay, so in order to get one of them, we would need rock smash. Okay. The one that's just... But it's just one, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yep. Otherwise, okay, so there's definitely one. one to the south, but I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, oh. Okay, if I went there, okay. Soft sand. That's fun. Um, so depending on how you do this, you can actually get another one. So from once you get there, um, mm -hmm. go down. Because I, I know there's the mistake of going to the left. The yep. one above you has a barricade. Yes. So, I, and I know there's action. an item down here. So, yes. grab this one, which gives me a mental herb. Leftovers. Yep. And then do I want to go left to grab the other one down here? Yeah. So okay. hang a left, and there should be some stairs to, your, to the south of you. Yeah. Over there. That got me a lumberry. Sweet. Nice. All right. So, now... Shall go towards uh now I'm up. Victory Road. I'm gonna go heal up my guys. Ah, first. this is the Route 46 entrance. Okay, so if you yes. go if you leave this entrance and then go just into the trees, you get two more apricorns there. If you haven't grabbed yeah. those. Well, not looking didn't find our holy grail yet, but a couple no. items that aren't awful. Hey, with, you got earthquakes, so that's not bad. I got earthquake and you got another leftovers, so yep. that lady's house mm -hmm. and we can avoid all uh, combats between here and the house which is very nice and then let the training commence mm -hmm. and there you go boy effect All good and topped off. Hooray. Uh, apologies, anyone, if you're seeing like some glitching on my end. <laughs> I had to update my driver and my OBS, and now they're not they're not horrible, but they're not doing hard. Right. right. Now, so it's like, uh... yeah, your computer decided it on top of everything else you were dealing with. It just just didn't want to play. So no, it didn't want to do jack shit today. Yeah, there isn't anything up here. Worth double checking. All right. Oh yeah, we were dealing with Tauruses. Yeah, you have the Tauros over here. That's what you were dealing with. Ah, uh, uh, yes, that's right. They hit really hard. Yes, they do. And they have pursuit, so I have to be careful. That's what it yes. was. But they also have all they all have the stupid barb, so I can't attack it physically. But my wizardos now has leftovers, so 
That buys me. Stupid cows, why can't you make this easy? Right? Oof. Okay, so we got a haunter. Gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. I get hit with curse. Yep. There we go. I'm just gonna ride this fight out. And we're just gonna keep using Screech Supersonic and let it do it do it to itself. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you keep confusing yourself until it hurts. It does hurt, well then mm -hmm. it's working. Yeah. But between its sticky barb and my leftovers, each round of combat is so long. <laughs> and there used oh. rest. But this means yeah. that I can swap out. There you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, while we're going through here, we, we've got my magical steam notes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that we can go through of things that come to my mind that we can always talk about. At time for Discussion time Street. Yeah, time for <laughs> Random Ass Discussion Street. Um, mm -hmm. See, so that's the thing, though, is there's some stuff on here where in the heat of the moment, I write something on there and I have no idea where my mindset was. Like, I right. want to point out one of the notes I have on here is called the Miracle Toilet, and I have no idea what that's <laughs> referring to. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Like, If I, if I was, was better I at about? improv, I'd say we'd make up what the Miracle Toilet is on the spot. I what? mean, if I had to guess, the Miracle Toilet had to be a situation where I really needed to use a bathroom and mm -hmm. just out of nowhere, like, the perfect toilet showed up. Yeah. That's the only thing I could think of. But or I, that's that doesn't sound remarkable enough. Yeah. Uh, counterpoint. The miracle yeah. toilet is the toilet where you sit down on it. You have the biggest crap of your life. Like everything. Oh, geez, a Regirock. Uh, I, mean, I got a rosary. Yeah. Uh, you have the biggest crap of your life and okay. you uh, basically you get up from the toilet when it's done. You feel so much better. And then you look down and there's nothing in it. Which is it a thing. Ate your poop. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the secret poop. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you meant you take like a shit so big that you have an epiphany. Well, I mean, those happen sometimes too. But... <laughs> That's where I thought you were going with that. Where it's just like, you, you go to the bathroom so hard, everything's relieved, you're like, I really need to forgive my dad. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> the bathroom's the thinking room for a reason anyway. True, true. But no, have you have you never had a good poop where like you, you poop and then you stand up and you realize that there is nothing left there? Uh, no, because I, well, yeah, on those automatic toilets, but the thing is, no, I'm talking scared. about a real one. Oh, no, I've, <laughs> yeah, I've had, had that. that where it's like I've had, I've gone to the bathroom. It's just gone. Yeah, I've had that happen a bunch of times, actually. <laughs> that, Alhan, are we sure you're human? Well, uh, I am. I don't are know. Are you about... an android? No, <laughs> I'm programmed ab to think. No, that I'm absolutely a human. My toilet okay. being a mimic, that might be in question, though. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, let's be honest. Know how, you know what? That's the thing is, I don't think I'd want to know the truth if my toilet was a mimic. I know. Because the, <laughs> I don't want to know. No, no, just let it have its moment. Yep. Um. So, yeah, we'll just cross <laughs> the miracle toilet off the list because I don't know what's going on with that one. But it's um, got to be like having having that out of nowhere, that perfect toilet that just shows up out of the fog. Yeah, it's waiting for I you. Think of is right. Like, I must have been having like a stomach pain or something, and I really just need to find a bathroom. And I just pulled off somewhere, and it's like the perfect. It, not only was it open, but it was like the perfect toilet where mm -hmm. I could be alone. That gl I, those glowing, beautiful red letters of Quick Trip come out of the fog. Oh my god! Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, I, I need to. Uh, I need to re recontextualize that for all of our southern friends. The glowing yellow letters of Bucky's come out of the fog. There you go. Now you understand. <laughs> and everything was made clear. Uh, <laughs> other than that, like, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So this was kind of a fun story. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't say where I was. For this job all i can say yeah. is that there was a bunch of animal enclosures mostly okay. like birds and stuff like that so there was like chickens pheasants lots of wild game sure and at one point i saw a peacock in there yeah and i messaged my coworker, and i was like 
oh hey they got peacocks here mm -hmm. he's like there's no peacocks here and i and i'm like yeah there's one in that cage back there and he's like no nah, that that's not a peacock that's not a peacock in there and i i had to pause i'm like is motherfucker arguing with me that i don't know what a fucking peacock looks like <laughs> okay and eventually i just straight up had to like take a picture sent to him I'm like then what the fuck is this yeah. And he's like, oh, I guess that is a peacock. I'm like, what do you mean? A peacock is not an animal that you just think you saw. No, peacock's kind of obvious. It's sort of been like if a giant anteater walked out of nowhere and went, oh, hey, it's a giant anteater. And someone went, nah, that, that, that's a... That's not that's an anteater. That's a dog. That's like giant, yeah, that's... It's my mastiff. <laughs> just don't look at its nose. Yeah, that's one of those things where, I mean, I can understand somebody out of the corner of their eye if the peacock is standing um, is standing in the distance and there's a bunch of pheasants in the foreground and you just, so your brain just thinks like, oh, another pheasant. But no, a peacock is so much bigger. And like, it, 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 it's so different though, yeah. too. It, it, kind, it literally stands out in nature a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, it'd be like the bad comedy routine of the, if I don't move, nobody will notice me while he's standing in mid all the pheasants. Yes. I, I don't, there's not much else to that story, but that's one of those where it's just like, I don't know how you could like even argue with someone that they didn't see a peacock. Right? <laughs> Again, it's meant to be seen. Yeah. So it's one of those where I don't think you could get that wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, no, the whole, the whole point of peacock is that we are loud and we make grab attention. <laughs> so that that's basically it for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Next top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, but can you What's imagine? The deal? <laughs> you see, like, I mean, but think about the plight of the peacock here for a moment. I'm going to get existential okay. because we can't. Right. Right. So, well, let's do this. Let's, so, you have a peacock whose entire, like, the male peacock, its entire point of existing basically is I am a large bird. I am beautiful. I've got the biggest plumage of any, like, terrestrial bird, period. Purely yes. for the sake of getting a mate. Yes. What happens when it wins? What do you mean? It gets to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but then what happens? It just sits there. It just, it, it becomes your stereotypical, like, like the, you know, the bad husband who's sitting on the rundown couch in a wife beater and hasn't worn another change of clothes in 40 years. All right. First of all, two <laughs> things. Second, <laughs> firstly, I need to see a peacock now in a wife beater. <laughs> right? Second, have you ever seen the videos of the people harvesting uh, peacock eggs from like nests? Uh, I can't say I have. Okay, I might have to go find it because there's one actually set to like Pokemon like encounter music. <laughs> and, that sounds like, awesome. It's a person who's like literally like gooping peacock, like they throw the peacock off of it, the male. Yeah. And they start scooping the eggs and then out of nowhere the peacock comes back and kicks them in the face. <laughs> So they're not complete deadbeats. Like That's that plumage covers the nest. I, <laughs> I gotta see if I can find this, and maybe I'll shoot it to you. Sure. Oh, let's see. Ease this Palkia. Oh, yeah. oh that's payback. Okay. There we go. Well, let me see if there's a gif of it or a video. Because, like, yeah, they make huge nests. Like, they're basically giant craters with a shitload of ping pong balls in it. So that sounds right. That's the best right. way I can describe it. That absolutely sounds right, though. Let's see. So, in another crossover yes. of uh, things that you are that you aren't surprised haven't existed yet, but at the same time are very su surprised haven't existed yet. Okay. Uh, I've seen the leaks, and I won't share them because leaks. But uh, they're about to announce a bunch uh, a a mate a very large uh, Dungeon and Dragons Lego set official. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Which looks really cool. But it's going to be 350 bucks for this big diorama thing. So it's like, yeah, cool, but I don't have the space. I don't have the money. Uh, right. Much more interestingly, uh, so Lego does these like blind bot, these blind bag minifigure releases that I've mostly don't pay attention to because it's either they're like, you know, town, village, people series, or it's like all Disney. Um, but they're doing a D&D &D series specifically with 
uh, with this D and D set, and I am going to spend so much money trying to get like two specific figures. <laughs> and they are. So one of them is a. Um, they have about half of these twelve figures are based off of like player character class and race combos, and one okay. of them is a is like a Gith Yankee wizard, which okay. I which Gith Yankee are my favorite race. Uh, wizards are uh, awesome i play i play sorcerer so um so i absolutely want that one for the me but they're also doing a actual figure of a character called the lady of pain from the okay. planescape uh setting which is one of my favorite settings and recently got uh actually got a book released for it which hasn't happened since the late 90s so um so it's one of those like, hey, you're recognizing this really cool character that's kind of been ignored for the last 20 years. So Okay, that's cool. Uh, I'm absolutely getting that because that's really good. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I saw the Dragonborn. I was mildly interested, so that's that mm -hmm. was my feeling on it. But then you know, I think we got spoiled by Baldur's Gate because the Dragonborns and that that game looks so good. They do. You can definitely tell the Dragon I mean the Dragonborns are all based off of some of the same same art yeah. but uh the, the minifig one very much looks like the one straight out of Baldur's gate so yeah come on go down actually i kind of want him to rest so i can back out of this but... yeah i'm i'm curious like some of these rosaries if i should send gyarados out because it's water but it's flying which has advantage there on it is. grass yeah it's, so it's one of those where it's like, ah, mm, ah. That's, that's risky. I don't know if it's... And it has ice, like, it has ice fang right away, so it'd be, be able to do some damage. But right. That's where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I really want this, uh, really want this Wizardos to evolve, but it's going to take two more levels, and I'm leveling very slow because of these Tauruses. Yeah, no, I may, I may just have to go a little moves. further south, uh, further south of the uh, this area and see if I can get a grass or that doesn't have them surf or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I can surf and get like and just be dealing with level 30s for a while, that would be just fine. Can I run? OK, cool. Nino Knight's up to 29. We're getting there. Yeah, I might try it in that direction. The hunters are good. Mm -hmm. Oh, so um, since you're also from the same state as me, uh, mm -hmm. uh, did your family ever go camping as a kid? We were think talking about like um, not going camping, but just mm -hmm. camping came up with talking with my family like a little while back. It's like, yeah. I would probably never get to go because I would probably have to do the glamping thing because I'm I'm just yep <laughs> yeah uh we did a handful of times um we had where I grew up we there were plenty of like parks little parks and campgrounds kind of nearby um but camping just was not I think well, was not as much our thing as my dad was hoping like oh, my mom yeah, was yeah. never a huge fan of it I'm I mean I'm sitting I'm in my 30s playing a Pokemon game right now so I think that tells you a lot about that. Uh, I mean, hey, yeah. You know, thank you for showing up. Um, what? You know, oh, I hey. still, I still like camping. I would love to go. Honestly, my mm. ideal place I'd love to go camping, but I, I you'd have to go out to like Washington State or California for it. Mm -hmm. Is I would love to um, rent out a uh, a remade Firewatch Tower for camping. That would be cool. But you'd have to go out to California or Washington. I looked it up because. Mm -hmm. That, I've that, been, I've, that's not the issue yeah. it's really i mean for me it's I, I sleep with the cpap so that's that's a chunk of the issue so i can't just kind of you know do hiking and can't and pitch a pitch a camp i have to be at a campground unfortunately right but uh but the idea of a you know knowing that that place will probably have an out like one outlet all i need knowing that i'll have that and maybe some water i'm much more interested <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that that's that's fair. And that's mm -hmm. the thing is like if if I ever did camping, it would have to be like a place that has cabins or whatever. I just remember yeah. like my family used to go to Door County every oh, yeah. summer. Oh yeah. Um which very fond memories of that, but it's one of mm -hmm. those where 
same thing with um as soon as we got a camper and moved out of tents like we never mm -hmm. went back to tents you know right we never had a camper so it was kind of a, a we would pitch like two or three tents with for my family so yeah we we changed to a camper to, to a pop-up camper not sure. like a driving camper um, yeah when when i was a kid and there was like a huge downpour and not only did the tent area that my dad had our tent in like flood so we had water like everywhere but there was like the tent collapsed too yeah so thankfully we um our aunts and uncles were there too and mm -hmm. we just got to stay in their tent yeah but like it was not good yeah <laughs> and after that well like we had a pop-up tent mm -hmm. so or a pop-up camper yeah bart and i have talked for a while about uh going to a couple of events where camping is kind of the main the main sleeping arrangement we'll say uh mm -hmm. and uh i'm definitely i'm still trying to get excited about the idea because of like you know the, the breathing issues and a few other just i think i've just had some bad experiences with camping or something Ooh, a reggie yeah. ice um do they explode i think they might i'm yeah, running I'm away gonna... from reggie rocks but i can look up reggie ice real quick yeah i'm gonna pull it up really quick because I've got double kick. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But on the camping, uh, we also, at, at the same time as what we said, we've got some cots that are camping ready, and we found a, we found a yurt that we kind of want to get, even just to have a it. Yurt. <laughs> yep. So it's like a big. That... It's it's basically a big circle tent with a center pole, okay. um, and it can hold like four people underneath it pretty comfortably. So. Okay. So, you know, maybe one day we'll see. No, that's that's cool. I'll say, yeah, there's so many like, again, options for that kind of stuff where that's why I'm like, ah, you know, maybe again, a Firewatch star or that that'd be the dream one that I, I, I can at least speak for Bard and that I she would jump on that immediately because that that idea is just so cool. Yeah, because there's ones that are just they're discontinued because there's either not enough there to actually make them serviceable. They do explode. Mm. GS has yurts. GS, GS. Yeah, what's GS? Yeah, what's GS? Mm -hmm. Um, I will. I will say I. I won't. I don't know that I would do it myself, just due to some convenience issues. But uh, my hometown does have. Work. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Her, her company. Cool. Uh, there you go. You got your yurts. There you go. We can make that work. Make it work with a yurt. yurt. Ha ha. Uh, my Sorry, hometown you, uh, does have an actual. <laughs> Sorry, the awkward pause after a terrible pause. <laughs> yeah, we, it's, it's, it's that question of we do, we, what we did. do we ride the bad joke or do I tell my boring story? There, it's a Anyways, lose lose. <laughs> bring on the boring story, Alhan, and uh, kill this awkward silence. Okay. Uh, so my hometown uh, built a bunch of submarines during World War II. Um, so they have a submarine that's permanently docked in town. Um, it's not one of the ones that was built there, but it's still it's still a submarine. Um, and at least during the pandemic, I don't know if um, I don't know if they're still doing it, but at least during the pandemic, they were renting out the submarine as a B&B. &B. Um, so it, cool. it's 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 attached to a museum. So you got like a special museum presentation like in the evening before they kind of they don't lock you in it at all, but before they, you know, tuck you in for the night. Um, so you get a special presentation. You get to sleep in the bunks in this World War II submarine. Uh, and uh, they have like, you know, some coffee and snacks usually for you in the morning. Mm -hmm. Really, the only reason why I haven't tried to convince a bunch of friends to, to basically say, let's pretend we're, we're under the sea for a little bit is the bathroom. There is no working bathroom on the sub, so you have to get out of the sub and go it's literally docked right outside the building so it's not like you have to go far but you still have to go outside in the middle of the night if you have to go pee <laughs> gotcha. so okay. yeah yeah it's one thing if you're that camping would... camping it's another thing if i'm you know i'm below below the water line of an icy river and decide you know now i'm gonna go outside <laughs> yeah now i gotta go stand outside and pee yep <laughs> Uh, it would be fun to get a ton of surrounding users. Okay. Yep, it would I be. Would add, like, I would do that. We do that kind, not necessarily with resort cabins, but uh, us and uh, our friends we play D&D &D with, um, we at least 
twice a year or so, we do rent out like an Airbnb or something like that for a couple of days. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, we we play D&D, we hang out, we grill out a bunch of stuff. We play board yep. games. Yeah, see, that's yeah. kind of thing is just kind of you got to take a break from computers and things like that. Oh, absolutely. We, we don't do the dumb thing of throw all the phones in a bag. No, no. That's we, how horror movies start. Yeah, no, we're <laughs> all uh, we're all a little too uh, anxiety written to do that. But yeah, um, yeah uh, you get a I, yes. Kayaking is so much fun. I haven't done it in so long. I, I should would do that. Like to just go biking on just some general trails. Nothing crazy, but yeah. as I say, my dad gave me a bike and it's like, oh, uh, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. when back when I was a kid and we were in Door County, like mm -hmm. in the morning, it would just take your bike and just go start riding around the campgrounds. Oh, yeah. And like you would go find like mini, like little, you know, trails and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those where it's like, oh, that'd be nice just to kind of just relax mm -hmm. or hiking. Hiking. I, yeah, absolutely. I, I can always try hiking. That's the thing is I can't my I'm my feet get so tired after a while, but it's what it really depends on what kind of hiking. Mm hmm. Like if we're lugging um, big old backpacks up places, that's the one thing too with the uh, oh right the 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 Firewatch ones is some of them have it where they like give you like an eight day ATV you out to it or whatever or mm -hmm. they let you rent an ATV. Some of them you actually have to hike to. Sure. And that just that's, walking around. That's yeah, a lot. Around yeah. It's fine too. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we do once, especially once the you know the weather stabilizes a little bit we do mm -hmm. uh bart and i do try to do some hiking at like local parks once in a while so yeah that, that we're a little more used to um i ride my bike a little bit but in good shoes <laughs> that's all that's if kind i get of... good shoes and socks then i'm yeah fine. that's kind of what we did is we decided we, we did that before we started walking around but but yeah we, we do that once in a while we've got a couple like cooler backpacks and stuff so we can carry carry lunch around with us and it's not too heavy on the cliff sides and see there are oh that'd be mm -hmm. nice oh that'd be gorgeous then, oh yeah, taylor's falls is just a beautiful area just do some outdoor grilling make pedgy pies <laughs> mm -hmm. oh that would be so much fun mm -hmm. might have maybe we have to um have to plan something this summer for that yeah pencil something in either for this summer or next summer i only yeah. say next summer because we just got the house and that's uh, that's fair that's, that's what takes priority right now oh yeah unfortunately get your yourself well, settled get your get finances through, settled yeah well once we make sure that the ac's working <laughs> yeah that's that's huge we that that then we'll be in a bit more of a safer spot for something like that right but yeah i just yeah that came to mind it's like you know i'd love to go camping but i could never do what my parents took me to do mm -hmm. just because like that it's so much work that's and, that's fair and it's one of those where like i don't have the the mental fortitude to be like okay we're gonna go uh drive up at six in the morning so we can go set up our uh rv and then we have to go make sure we into town and mm -hmm. get whatever necessities we're missing Yep, yep. Man, this machoke is fucking slamming me. <laughs> I mean, that's die. what they do. Well, he's just grabbing the snake and just throwing it around. Okay, I'm not going to be... I'm not oh, he's be... also beating me up, too. Yeah. Resort cabins? I mean, yeah, resort cabins are definitely an option. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're... Da I'm uh, I'm not going to be hanging out around this water, I don't think. It's all four well, trusses. Would... All four trusses. That's a bad... Oh. Uh, that's a bad day if I... That's a bad omen. Yep. I am doing okay here. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for the idea of a resort cabin if the if that's a thing. I mean, we kind of do that with a couple with certain cons anyway, so. Right. But I mean, just over the last like 12 years, enough of us have uh, enough of us have slept in the same room together that we kind of know enough quirks. Right. Yeah, that we can make it work. Mm -hmm. Things aren't a surprise anymore. Until we all bust out the Sasquatch outfits. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I mean, that's just what happens at 3 a.m. Most of us yeah, aren't even yeah. conscious at that point. They're well, just I out. Mean, it, depending on if we go back to Wisconsin, we'd have to bust out hoed egg costumes. Oh, of course, of course. <clears throat> With respect on the name of the egg. Yeah. I thought you already. Yep, okay. Why is it you can throw my worm when it's in the sky? What are your legs made of? <laughs> your muscle. Muscle doesn't do that. Mind you. 
I've got that hidden fifth muscle in my leg. Oh, we don't. No, no, stop. The Jordicep. This is. Oh. <laughs> I was about to say this is a PG-13 stream, but it's really not. It's, yeah. Oh, hyper say, it That could be. suck. When you click on my stream, it should tell you it's mature content. <laughs> That's true. I don't know if it, I don't know about you, but I I definitely make sure mine is uh, mature audiences only. I don't think I have it technically set for that, but whatever. That's okay. You, you don't see a hot tub behind me. You're fine. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sorry, Alan, I'm ruining all your sponsorship deals with my terrible swearing and foul language. No, no, that's fine. Just think of all the raid shaggy leg you could have had. You know, if you hadn't been talking like that, I could have given you 50,000 free silver and a free hero. But here you are. So many air ups just waiting in the wings for you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just because I have to say the word cock once in a while. Right, right. You're just ruining everything for me. How dare you? I know. I'm. I'm so sorry, man. Can I offer you? Uh, can I offer you a ridge wallet in these trying times? Really? <laughs> Let me take a look at that. Oh my! Look how firm it is, and how good it is at blocking evil RFID <laughs> signals. <laughs> these are That's affordable. Right. Made of industrial grade steel. Really? The ridge wallet will never. <laughs> And if you use the code Pixel Alhan at check. Oh, really? Well, I you're... was going to say Palhan, but that sounds odd. It does, but it doesn't. It's it sounds good, but it's weird. It sounds like a Pal World deal that we screwed up. Yeah, that's true. That's that's the first DLC. <laughs> I've been hearing fun things about that. Uh about Pal World? I, I'll have to check out Pal World at some point. Yeah. But it's one of those where, again, other things that are more occupying my brain space are happening in yeah. terms of games. For sure. I mean, uh, I know you just got into Helldivers 2, which is uh, definitely along the same lines of these, like, uh, Indian and, like, double-A games that are... Uh... Oh, jeez, that, that false swipe did a Ooh, lot. Terrible. Holy cow. That is a critical hit on a false swipe, so... Uh... Yeah, we're going to, uh... We're gonna back out real quick. Yikes. Yeah, I know, the criticals are, are definitely... <laughs> mm -hmm. It's kind of that thing where I'm always doing the math in my head of, uh, as long as... As long as the, da the damage is less than about, you know, a, a little bit less than half, I know I can safely take a critical, but I'm always keeping that uh, that bubble in mind. Yeah, I need to go back to that lady to heal up. Oh. Yeah, so I, I'm really appreciating how uh, like all the really big games of right now are the uh, are basically the video game equivalent of four schmucks are willing to do anything for eight bucks. I mean. Here's the thing, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of the best games that come to mind were initially like four schmucks willing to do everything. I mean, no, I'm, I'm not. Doom. I'm not upset about that. I, I, I'm thrilled about that. Like, I, I may have misrepresented myself there, but no, I absolutely love this. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of a return to form that a lot of people are just again wanting. I, yeah. I, I'm not gonna say we're back to what we used to be. I don't think that ever is no. going to happen. But it's gonna be these uh ebbs and flow mm -hmm. in uh gaming i mean where we're we're already in i i think we're basically kind of done with the live service thing and while helldiver 2 does have some live service elements to it it's not as gratuitous as other ones have been like the... uh, how do i put it it comes down to more cosmetic than mm -hmm. numbers yeah the failures of like the avengers game and uh suicide squad oh, suicide squad that, especially that's the big killer yeah with those things failing, uh, and we're, we are genuinely in the midst of a massive video game industry crash. Like as gamers, we're not gonna, we're not gonna feel it for about another year or two, mm -hmm. but um, the the amount of layoffs in the oh, sector is insane. Like it's, it's been, been, we are, we are at like 1983 levels in terms of like game developers and game companies going under. Yeah. Um, which well, is not keep great. An for, keep an eye out for AI generated shit now and in order yeah. to get corners. Uh yeah, we'll definitely be having to watch that. Ah, freaking Fury Stripes. Um 
but what you're um, also what you're also going to see out of this is um you'll have your your big companies are going to survive you're going to oh, have yeah. ea's going to stand it's going to probably get bought out by some super company at some point probably either disney or apple um although disney just made a huge investment for in epic so i would actually wouldn't expect disney to pick up ea at this point um so you know look for apple to jump into that but right. uh outside of that and then microsoft owns everybody else uh and sony owns everybody else we, that means all of this kind of indie single a and double a space is wide open and that's always where the most interesting games come from they might not always be the best games but they're always the ones that stick with you because they do something different and you're seeing that with uh with like hell divers you're seeing that with lethal company which is literally a one person dev team that made one of the funniest games of the year uh it's 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 one of those times where you know you for every Call of Duty and Madden you're going to get and feel kind of bad about, you're going to find some really interesting stuff happening right now because people are getting out of the major publisher system mm -hmm. and they are, especially with things like Steam, you know, Steam's direct service to be able to put your games right on it and Itch.io and other, basically a lot of platforms to get your stuff out there. So you're going to see yeah. a lot of movement in terms of these small studios doing things. Yeah, and that's that's gonna be nice, it, and it's just gonna it, something will eventually pick up because it it's it only a matter of for like the big indie hit does a thing, and then mm -hmm. all of the gaming companies try to dogpile on that too. Yep, ape it. Oh yeah. So I, I guarantee you, Pal World has shaken something up in the system mm -hmm. where Pokemon. I don't know if it's gonna be the ZA game or if whatever the next you know, double iteration is going to be, but mm -hmm. if there isn't changes, I think there's going to be some very, very disappointed people in Pokemon. Yeah, if if Pal World wasn't, isn't taken as a shot across the bow at the Pokemon company and at Game Freak, it should mm -hmm. be. And it it is there, they are risking everything by ignoring that. Um, yes. And you're, you're seeing that also with, you I know. I, I really don't think they're going to get away with another Scarlet or Violet. No, I don't like, think so especially no. in terms of just optimization and and the there are so many good ideas and i like scarlet and violet a lot more than i like sword and shield but mm -hmm. but in terms of just the technological stack they're ba they're making games the exact same way they did back when x and y came out and yeah. they're still other than some minor like animation upgrades they're still relying on that and they need to kind of be woken woken up from it yeah it's Ooh, sludge. I mean, it, it's that not going to destroy the company, but it's one of those where it's it's going to start losing steam. Oh yeah, you know. And again, as long as like Pal World keeps up um, doing what they're doing and making the game interesting, there are mm -hmm. people who are going to play that as their alternative to Pokemon. Right. So, like, why would why would you you know go mm -hmm. back if it's if it's giving you something you don't? Exactly. Like there there's been times when literally I wanted to just remake or, you know, start a new account on my Switch just so I can play Legends Arceus again, because that was probably the best Pokemon game I've played in a long time. Oh, absolutely agree. Absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah, that's something that they also need to change. Make multiple save slots, please. Right. Like, I don't know why that's a problem. Please mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> I don't want to hear it's it's for because they want to block like cheating and all that shit. I don't care. <laughs> Some of us just want to play the game. Okay. All right. Sorry, I was. I thought I was hearing something. No, no, you're all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like all of these franchises. Really, at this point, I would say the only two games that you can guarantee are going to sell things are probably Call of Duty and and Madden. And even then, both of those have had the so much shine off of them that the only people buying them are the people who buy a ps5 specifically they buy a ps5 and they're not gamers but they buy madden and they buy call of duty and those yeah. are the two games a year they buy yeah. um and and that's actually a, a pretty significant it's a big market yeah so i'm not I'm, and i'm not going to be upset man. at those people the the i'm not going to play the real gamers card like that's not no. that's not a place to go right. but outside of those fans who are going to do that 
you're quickly running into a situation where the people who are who play more games and make gaming more of a hobby than just a something I do every now and then on Friday with the boys. Um, that's you see that with the games that were super successful, basically your Baldur's Gates. I'd I'd say your Alan Wake's like I keep talking about, but uh, turns out Alan Wake actually did not make back its budget somehow. Um, so that's actually technically been a failure. Um, really? Yeah, that, which is unfortunate because I feel like there's too many unique ideas in that to let it just uh, let it just go. But you know, that's yeah. the thing with the remedy games. I always feel like, despite how mu much mainstream attention that they will get, they are still kind of niche. Yeah, you know, no, they very much are niche. Sam Lake is an incredible writer, but he's also very. Uh, I don't know. Ignomatic's not the right word because he's not. Uh, the, Sam, uh, like he, he, Sam Lake does what Sam Lake wants to do. Yeah, nine, then... nine times out of ten, it's super creative, it's super great, and you're watching a wild, in the middle of a game, you're watching a wild 20-minute experimental, like, experimental movie that's only in Finnish and, uh, like, we right. just weird. But on right. the other hand, uh, how many people are going to say, hey, you need to play this game? It's about a girl who may or may not have psychic powers, who discovers a, you know, government building in New York City for a secret government department where they control basically SCPs. Well, and, here's, here's, yeah, here's which the is... thing about that, though, is <laughs> I feel like control came at just the right time where things like the SCP, the bathrooms, mm -hmm. uh, even on television, um, just things with... Uh, you know, legends and myths and monsters and stuff like that seems to be just always somewhat kind of occurring where that's true. Alan Wake is less X Files and more Twin Peaks. It's very Twin Peaks. So and, and that's the thing is Twin Peaks is so niche. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. the people who have seen it, love it. And they think it's one of the greatest shows ever. And yeah, um, it is. It but is. It, it's it super is niche. unashamed at like the Twin Peaks references are obvious on the nose and you are intended to realize, ah, this is a Twin Peaks bit. Uh, and the same thing with all of, with the massive amount of Stephen King in both of those right. games. Like right. it is and it to the to the point where the first Alan Wake game opens with Alan quoting Stephen King. Like yeah. it's one of those like it, it's on the it's kind of nice in a way because you, they straight up say, yeah, this is what we're doing. You are not going to be surprised by the fact that we are doing this. There's no twist in that point so right so, so it's, when you're it's not when you're gonna fake you out something like that though that's where it's like okay you, do you want to watch another twin peaks thing where you have to like watch every detail and pay attention to it or right do you want a cool monster of the week podcast game yep yep so with with all the like again the podcasts are like cryptids and mm -hmm. all that stuff I, i'm not shocked that uh control was a little more better received oh than yeah alan wake Absolutely. Um, especially because with what few articles I've been seeing, uh, I shouldn't say few, what mm. articles I've looked into on Alan Wake seem to quote it as more of a survival horror shooter than a thriller mystery like the first one was, kind of? Yeah. If I'm quoting that correctly? The first one is a is a is a mystery story but is much more of an action game. Like your yeah. combat is very action focused. An action mystery. The uh, Alan Wake 2 is Resident Evil. Like, Very, yeah, mechanically, right. it is Resident Evil. You would and actually you jump right. You would, yeah. Of that game still hot on people's uh, mind. Mm -hmm. That's where it makes it a little tough to, like, offer the sell for, you know, oh, yeah. it's this game that's like Twin Peaks, but then it also does Resident Evil stuff. And mm -hmm. then your brain goes, so deadly premonitions. And then you say, Ooh. fuck you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, you went a direction there. <laughs> You know, I've never played it's... the game. Uh, there's a great video about it by, um, mm -hmm. let me see if I can pull him up. Um, there's a YouTuber I like to watch who sure. does really good long essays on games and his Deadly Premonition one is actually really good. Sure. Um, uh, totally Pointless TV. Okay. Uh, I, I'll send you the link if you want it. Sure. He does do the second game and he's one of the few people who actually did anything with the second game because like, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, what is so bad about this second game and oh he gets into it and it's yeah. like oh it's that bad because wasn't uh you know correct me if i'm wrong but wasn't like it a big deal that deadly premonition 3 was a switch exclusive or am i thinking of something different two there's only been two games okay only was the and two it's, it's okay deadly premonitions 2 
was a Switch exclusive, and gotcha. it is terribly optimized. Yeah. Like, it was made for the Switch, and it runs like ass. Well, I mean, cool. It's got something in common with Pokemon. Congratulations. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so, it, but it, it's one of those where I still never played the original, despite how weird it is. I have it on my PS3. I feel like but, it's one of those games I would need to sit down and actually play with Bard sometime, because it probably would be our thing. Like, we would probably yeah. be really into it, but... Yeah, it, it's it's kooky, it's weird, it's got a mm -hmm. good mystery to it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the guy's channel I sent you to, you can always check it out. He's got a lot of fun videos, because... Um, what, what, what's another game that he recommended? I'm like, oh, I should try that. And it's like a mod mm -hmm. of, like, I think a Doom game or something. Oh, uh, um, my, my house? No, 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 <laughs> my, not my house. I did watch that one video on it that you sent of the long-winded breakdown on it and that was yeah. really interesting yeah no that's that i've not played that mod myself because i think it would be one where i would genuinely get kind of bored with it just because yeah. of the doom mechanics but uh but i can really appreciate it and i like watching the videos on it um what did he do uh in sound mind i can't say i know that one um that was an interesting one he did um he did like a bunch of the classics too like um you know the silent hill games and um Mm -hmm. His Dead Space 3 video is actually really good, too. Sure. Uh, that's a series where it's just like, oh, God, that that's depressing where that mm -hmm. series went. Yeah. Um, looking forward to the second remake when that happens, because I think the second game is actually really good. That'll be that'll be cool. And that will be the end of it, because I, there's no way that they will ever remake Dead Space 3, because nobody wants mm -hmm. it. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing, though. This is a Jar Jar Binks scenario, Elhan, where it's just like, what do you mean? That's like the dirt you want to play in because no matter what you do, you can't fuck it up even more. That is true. Unlike a certain Battlefront collection that just came out. Oh, I oh, I'm, saw I'm... the tweet about that. Uh, Ooh, I don't know the full story, th so if this should you, be fine. you can you can get into it. He's... Oh, true. I got a crit on a pursuit while I was pulling out. Oof. You all right. Yeah, we're OK, but it was uh, it got dicey. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I can I can tell the Battlefront story if you want to hear the Battlefront story because there's been some new twists in it in the last couple days too. Look, I'm just about to kick this Kabuto, so go right ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, Battlefront, Battlefront Two, uh, not to be confused with EA's Battlefront and Battlefront Two, um, but the games that came out in 2000, I want to say 2003 and 2005. The first one was part of the post Attack of the Clones tie-in games, and the second one was a tie-in to Revenge of the Sith. Um, they are classic Battlefield style, so it's control point, capture the flag, uh, yeah, and Battlefront yeah. 2 had the XL mode where you could have up to 64 players, which in 2005, yeah, okay. awesome. So uh, it used GameSpy servers, again, 2005, just kind of what you did back then. Um, just roll with it. And while there have been, you can play the current you can play classic Battlefront 2 uh, online using some different mods and different services. You can't, it, it's it's clunky, it's it's rough, it, it looks a bit dated. Um, you kind of have to mod it to get it to run in like widescreen definitions, uh, that, that, that kind of thing, not too bad. Yeah. Um, okay. So Aspir, which is the company that has been doing the ports, I won't call them re-release, re uh, you know, they're not, upgrades or anything they are straight ports of a bunch of star wars games over the past six seven years now um they announced that they are releasing the battlefront uh c complete collection which includes both battlefront one and battlefront two um unlike most of their other port star wars ports especially uh this one m m most of their other star wars ports are get it to play in widescreen if it's a multiplayer game, might put in some basic multiplayer functionality by just like turning on the server again kind of deal, nothing fancy. And uh, and getting it, if it wasn't fully console ready before, getting it console so you can play it on Switch. Um, I've got two of their remakes, uh, which is their remake of Episode One Racer and of Republic Commando, originally for PC and Xbox. And yeah, they're pretty bare bones. They are the game. That's that's what you're paying for. That's what you're getting. You're probably a little bit overpriced most of the time, but they go on sale really quick for pretty cheap. But this one was going to be a little different. Um, Aspir has come out of a, a just re had released the Tomb Raider Classics Collection, which was very, very well received. Um, it is 
Tomb Raiders 1, 2, 3 with fully upgraded graphics in the like uh, Master Chief Collection styles that you can switch between the classic graphics and the new graphics with the click of a button. Um, uh, controls, you could switch between the classic tank controls and a more modernized control system so you can play it a little easier. Uh, and just a real high quality uh, remake, which was a, it was not a remake, but basically a real high quality upgrade on uh, on Tomb Raider. Yeah, good, very good remaster. Okay. For Battlefront, they promised not to that degree, but something kind of similar. They were going to up-res all the textures, uh, get it to play nice and widescreen, turn back on all the servers for both games, which included uh, the 64 person uh, mode. Uh, add more of the maps into the 64 person mode. Okay. And it was going to include on all platforms what was originally the Xbox exclusive DLC hero characters of uh, Kit Fisto and Asajj Ventress. Okay. The game comes out and it is a hot mess. Um, so on release, it had launched with a total of three of the 64 person servers. Okay. Total. So, uh, basic, you know, and the game launched with a 10,000 plus player count at release. So, good luck trying to get into a game if you wanted to play <laughs> multiplayer. If you could get into right. a game multiplayer, you were dealing with crashes. You were dealing with infinite spawn loops. You were dealing with uh, the map counts not working. Uh, your like reinforcement count, which is basically the ticking down score of how many deaths you can take until until you lose the match. Um, uh, that wasn't counting correctly. Um, so a, a combination of you couldn't play the game level technical errors were going on. Right. Then on top of it, uh, both of these games installed in their classic versions on PC are a total of about 11 gigabytes, which is pretty big for 2005 say, era that's software. Pretty big, yeah. It, you know, between eight and 11. Uh, yeah. These remaster versions clock in at about 75. 75 gigs? Yes, it is 75 gig to play these games. What the hell do they have in there? So what pe people did a little bit of digging on this and what they oh, found out- Yoda nudes, got it. Okay. Yeah, it's all Yoda nudes. Now we found out where he's been keeping his ketamine. Um, uh. <laughs> uh, what we found out is they up all the textures, but by up the textures, what they said, what they meant is we did an AI up on the textures. So a couple of textures look real funk and they okay. didn't go in and correct them. And then they didn't compress them at all. They are 75 gig of uncompressed up up to like 1440p textures of the same Stormtrooper uniform that you had in 2005. Okay. So it is blow bloated and broken, and everyone is very impressed how you could break an unbroken game from 20 years ago. Yeah, that is impressive. So it is overwhelmingly negative. Uh, to so are their, they fixing it? To their minor credit, they have turned on a lot more servers, and they have been doing some bug fixes that have taken out a lot of the initial uh, complete game breaking, I can't play my game level bugs. So it's playable. There are still spawn issues. There are still uh, rubber banding issues, horrendous rubber banding issues. Um, still a lot of problems with it and they need to do a lot more work on it. Like what level of rubber banding? I'm familiar with rubber banding and things like Mario Kart, but what do they mean for rubber banding in this? So in PC shooter rubber banding, the idea is that if you, you watch somebody run across the screen, then you watch that and immediately teleport to where they started and run again oh. and again. It's basically oh, okay. uh, it's basically a client side trying to compensate for lag and data not coming in correctly. Gotcha. It's happening Understood. constantly. You watch videos or streams of people playing this and all you see are just people jittering back and forth running alongside you because the game is not handling it. Okay. So that's hot garbage. Then what broke this week with it and really has kind of made people throw their hands up and say we're done with this company. Uh, in the trailer, they showed the... Uh, uh, they showed that, that they had that special DLC pack where it was... Uh, it was the two uh, the two hero characters that were only on Xbox. Okay. On on the surface, cool. Glad you had that. But one person took a look at it and realized this looks familiar in a not right way. Oh. A modder 
who had released the mod for the PC version of Battlefront 2 uh, to specifically add those characters in. Basically, he did it by not having the original code, but by kind of doing a reskin and a little bit of tweaking of two existing characters and then copying okay. them, making a duplicate of them. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. not so they're not the true it's not official, but yeah, yeah, it's just reskinning two characters mm -hmm. and tweaking. Yeah, and it has a couple animation bugs because, you know, it it, yeah. it, lo it looks like a character, but it's got the animations of another. So kind of, you know, it, it's a fun mod for a game that's 20 years old. Nobody cares. Right. The dude looked at the trailer and said, wait a minute, that's not the right stance for the, how that character is supposed to stand on the actual Xbox version. And then now that the games come out, he did a little bit more digging and realized, oh, no, these are the exact same bugs and animation bugs and things I can start from the mod I made. Oh, no. So, so they stole the mod data and they stole that in instead? They stole the mod data. Um... And they promised, oh, no, you know, we were going to get rid of it. And this was just kind of a test. Thing. And of course, it's all still in there. Um, so they are being taken to task now for stealing uh, Deb's mod for trying to get this game to work. And it's still all broken. And they are not uh, they're not having it. It's the fans are really done with them and done with how they've been treating these classic Star Wars games and done with how kind of everything has gone. So yeah. this what company other was Star Wars games that they do. Uh, so they have done at this point, they've done uh, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy. Uh, they I think they did a re-release of Rogue Squadron for the for the N64. Uh, they yeah. did Episode One Racer, Republic Commando, um, uh, Battle for Naboo, a couple other a couple other of those kind of like mid 2000s Star Wars games and forward. Um, gotcha. And they're all pretty bare bones no fancy features there are you know the bugs that were in the original versions are in here they pretty much just slap wrappers on them that got them working on the new consoles and then charge and then charge 30 bucks um gotcha. there has been a good star wars re-release that came out in the last uh in the last month or so uh a re-release of uh dark forces which was a dos first person shooter kind of the doom the star wars doom clone basically Oh yeah, the, yeah, I saw G-Man Lives talking about it. It's fantastic. Now, yeah, there are the the upscaling of it, it looks really good. Mm, uh now Dark Forces is a not necessarily the greatest of the DOS of the classic DOS shooters. There are a couple levels that are just kind of straight BS. Um but it's nostalgic for a lot of people. It's the game where where Kyle Katarn was introduced. I was going to say, yeah, Kyle Katarn's like a big fan favorite, isn't he? Absolutely. And especially with where it goes in the later games, Je the Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy games. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that, rem that remake, uh, brand new game engine, uh, brand new textures, all the cutscenes got redone and, and reanimated because Star Wars DOS cutscenes are very much kind of like three frames of animation and the mouth is the mouth is animated yeah, and the rest he, screen isn't kind of stuff. I love it. Well, it's a, it, it, it's a classic aesthetic, but also it's a classic aesthetic. But it was very much coined by uh, the company that made it, but like Lucas Arts in terms of their uh, point and click adventures. That's what it kind of comes off like a point and click cutscene. Yeah, it's absolutely that. Um, and they did some really cool. And they did some artistic reinterpretation of how those look. So it's not just. I saw it's not a just that. They looked, they looked. They looked pretty good. Yeah. So. There, there is hope out there, and th this release was not done by Asper. You can tell because there was heart put into it. Um, oh, shit, all right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, Asper also uh, also was on kind of the, uh, on a lot of people's list going into all of this because Asper was in charge of the announced Knights of the Old Republic remake. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. And, and that then got canceled, right? It, it has not been officially canceled but it was officially pulled from Aspir and given to Saber Interactive instead. Saber is currently, uh, they make a lot of, I'd say like single to double A titles. Their biggest thing they've been working on recently is uh, Warhammer Space Marine 2. Um, and there's a lot of excitement about Space Marine 2. Um, so they got a hold of the license for the, they lost the chance to make that because of, I guess it just was not, it just wasn't good. Um, oh yeah. And now, and now Saber got s it sold off or spun off uh, out of Embracer Group as part of the video game crash that's going on. And thankfully, they do exist. They weren't closed. 
but uh, nobody knows if the Kodor remake is going to be a thing. Right. That's kind of left twisting the wind, unfortunately, it sounds like. Yeah. What's really, I'm going to say funny slash unfortunate and a little bit of cor Star Wars corporate synergy for you. Um, kind of as part of their gaming, their gaming line of figures, um, the Star Wars Black Series figures, they're the six inch figures you can buy at stores. Um, you, through GameStops and a few other stores, they have a, a subset of those that are specifically characters from video games. Um, most of the time, it's just to advertise whatever big Star Wars game came out. It's like, you know, flamethrower troopers from Battlefront or the, mm -hmm. some of the characters from the Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor games. Mm -hmm. They've done a handful of them from uh, older games. So uh, the character of Starkiller from the Force Unleashed titles and yeah. and like some of the specialized trooper variants that only appeared in that game. But last year, they did a special set of uh, of characters from Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, these aren't the first times they've released Knights of the Old Republic characters. Uh, they've done Darth Revan, uh, Mission, who's like the rogue character. Uh, Zalbar is kind of your barbarian character. Um, they did a bunch of those in the past, and I've got I've got like the two different Revan ones, although they have those titled based off of the uh, the Star Wars mobile game, the Galaxy of Heroes mobile games. So they could kind of get around a few things that way. Okay. Um, but last year they released a, a, a couple more Nice Deal Republic characters of uh, like the female lead Bastila Shan and the main villain Darth Malak. But their designs are not the classic designs. They've got some pretty significant costume changes for both of them. They, I mean, they're both recognizably still the same, but they both look different when you compare them to other figures and like the original art and stuff. Okay. And you found out that these were actually based off of what the character designs were going to be for Aspir's version of the Knights of the Old Republic remake. Um, oh. So that's kind of cool. Also, That's you cool. you get this wild realization that um, you have two figures now that are basically concept art figures for a game that may or may not ever actually exist. Yeah. So. Which, hey, that could be worth some. True. Yeah, they, these weren't wide release figures, so uh, so they they might be something pretty cool. But just one of those weird things that have come out of all of this. That's, that's just wild that a company has gotten so many shots to work on Star Wars stuff and they keep fucking it up. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's because it they like just some studio. They just have not cared and they've proven that. And that's the frustrating part. I, I guess, but it's one of those where it's like, how many times do you got to be like, oh, we're making another fucking Star Wars game, guys. Mm -hmm. It's just like, ugh, we just want to make waifu simulators. Right. When will we get our chance to make Milk Mama Maid Master 6? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the other... I can't believe, considering what I just talked about, I forgot about this. Uh, one, some I, of the okay. other ports they've done are the two Knights of the Old Republic games. Oh, okay. um, famously, very famously, they announced that their release of Knights of the Old Republic 2 was going to include a mod. And they announced this ahead of time, so they didn't steal this one this time. Um, but most versions of Knights of the Re Old Republic 2 are bundled with, these days, what's known as the... Uh, the Sith Lord's Restoration mod. Uh, Kodor 2 was famously rushed and came out a year after Knights 1 came out uh, to try and meet a Christmas deadline. And it was made by Obsidian Entertainment. Knights 1 was made by Bioware. Um, and Obsidian had to cut massive amounts of the game to make it reach the deadline. And then when it did come out, it still was really buggy. Like, I remember playing it on PC and it would crash. So it's Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> yes. It. Yes. But uh, the good thing is, uh, what they did release was still really good. You could see where the you could see where the uh, where the sword slashes were to kind of cut out chunks were, unfortunately. But it was going. It was a very good game. It still is. Uh, I quite enjoy it. Um, but this mod was a fan effort of about ten years because all of the assets were still in the game, like all the maps and stuff were still there. Um, so this basically rebuilt and re-added all of the cut sequences, which were an entire planet, an entire major level, um, oh, wow. and and like okay. a couple, a, a bunch of new characters that mm -hmm. were supposed to be in there. Uh, and it had the support of the developers, like Obsidian helped out as much as they legally could by giving access to a lot of concept art and a lot of script stuff that they that they had. Um, okay. And Aspir had promised that these releases were going to include 
uh, the restoration mod. And also it fixes a ton of the bucks. So it's it's one of those you don't you just don't play that game without it anymore. OK, yeah, they just didn't. <laughs> they announced oh. they had, they released it and it didn't have the restoration mod. People were like, we're getting all the old the bugs that this fixes. And they were said, yeah. well, we had ran into some issues getting it working, which fair. I can understand how that would be janky, especially like on the switch version. And they right. said, well, we're going to get it out. We're going to get it out six months later. We're still planning on releasing it and we're planning on releasing it within the next month. They ended up just completely canceling the mod and just cutting all support and just being like, yeah, we're done. We're so not going to bother. Dude, like it's I would so know. frustrating, can, but like that's so cuzzy and bad business practice. I don't like I'm what blows my mind is like if this was like any like other franchise, mm -hmm. I could see it being like, oh, well, it is what it is. This is all we can get out for the uh, mystery science theater game group. Right. But it, but this is Star Wars and Disney. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Disney can put up with that. Like I, maybe it's it's making enough money, but I I don't know. I think it's that's I think so that's weird. the case. Is I think they license specifically these old titles for really cheap. I think Disney is was hurting after the negative reception to the EA branded titles because mm -hmm. the only EA title when EA had the Star Wars exclusivity was Fallen Order, and that was not their major game. It was supposed to be their version of Battlefront Two which these days is a decent game. Some hackers on PC aside, but that's kind of every PC game right now. Um, but when it released, what was the source of the most downvoted comment in Reddit history? Like, oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, it was Disney was reeling and they were trying to find ways to make decent money and decent goodwill uh, the only way they could. And they could license out all of these really old games for cheap and a company says hey we can get those working on the consoles and people will be nostalgic and buy a few copies for cheap yeah i yeah. guess like if the cost outweighs uh the profit or whatever like, yeah if they made more than what it spent and it's something where they barely all they had to do was upscaling I pretty much why they're like yeah don't bother doing any more support for it we've made back what we wanted yeah it's a tax write-off this year mm -hmm. and frankly i think a lot of them have been profitable because the the rights were probably acquired for dirt for peanuts especially with the promise that we're not changing the games so you don't need to go through the, all the story group and go through all the back and forth of developing a new game um your your development has been very limited in terms of what you're changing on the title it's fixing the resolution uh which there are many tools to do that these days in the professional like game development kits and uh yeah, yeah. it's that's how you get here yeah, it's just sad, though. It is. Any, anytime there's like a remake or a remaster of a game that's, you know, beloved to your childhood mm -hmm. or growing up or whatever, and it's just treated with just such a fuck it, ship it, get it out, who cares? Yeah. It's just sad. Yeah. It, like, it reminds me of like the Secret of Mana remake. Mm -hmm. Like, I loved that game as a kid and I was looking forward to actually trying to play it, but I guess like it's so poorly optimized and everything that it's not even worth it. And it's like, right. oh, that sucks balls. Right. And that's what I've been hearing is we like I appreciate even if they're kind of lousy, I appreciate the remakes that at least attempt to, you know, put things in a 3D engine, try to like actively redraw all the sprites, unless you're that stupid Final Fantasy mobile version that just made all the SNES sprites look like hot garbage. Uh, yeah, as lo like the ones that, you know, they they put in effort, but they fail. I can at least respect. But it's these kinds of things where it's just like, this is a port of a game that came out on the original Xbox and you're kind of, you never- I mean, You can't make it run. <laughs> you never explicitly say it's a port, but you, it's it's just a port. And you're trying to mask it up and play it nice and release a $70 limited edition through limited run on it. And, yeah. but it's, it's a port of a game that you can buy for $2.99 on a Steam sale. Right. Like, because yes, they were, that, that's one of the reasons why I get cranky about limited run also is because for a while, every single one of these releases also had a limited run version that would be anywhere from 50 to 90 bucks. And game wise, it's the same game. It was like no changes to the game, but you're going to get the Lucasfilm branded thumb drive on it. And all of them were the same Lucasfilm branded thumb drive. You would get a collectible coin, maybe a poster, and maybe one or two other little things. Mm -hmm. And it's 
and it was you could predict when you heard and a special edition of this release of Knights of the Old Republic is going to be through a limited run it's going to have this 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 and this and you look at it and just say where's my five, five bucks for getting that right <laughs> so yeah, I didn't really know that about limited run I yeah. mean I, I enjoy some of their stuff I've gotten like I got the Scott Pilgrim game and that was worth it to oh. me but like a lot of their stuff has been really good especially for one-off titles little titles Shredder's We've... Revenge yeah I got through them too yeah Lim Shredder's Revenge we have the really nice like top of the line limited run uh package of Transistor because that game means a ton to Bard and I um and it you know beautiful box beautiful kind of set piece uh has the actual switch version inside it um and we're not upset we got that but it's just they can either care or they can be the laziest oh. on the planet yay yeah, yeah finally we're gonna get that explode There he is. That's what we're looking for. All right. And he wants to learn crunch. Yes, please. Oh, let him crunch. Please crunch. We do not need, uh, we do not need roar. <laughs> it barely yeah, hits unless anyway. You, unless you do, well, unless you do any like uh, spike swap outs. Right, but I don't think I have Pokemon that can really do that. Let's take a look at him. Oh, what I wouldn't give for one of these Pokemon to have a fire move of some kind. No. Okay, full immunity to all sound based move, which is the same uh, stat wise. Not the greatest, which makes sense because he was a Wizmer until he was 35. But uh, but I'll take it. 80s, 70s. Yeah. Yeah, solid defense. Mm -hmm. Solid, solid special. Enough. Solid enough. Solid attack. Good kind well, of all rounder. That there was uh, some moves you were gonna start teaching him too. Yes, oh, he can learn that. earthquake. He can learn flamethrower. Oh my God, he's huge. Yeah. Yeah, he can learn. Uh, he can learn a, a bunch of utility uh, special uh, like elemental moves. So, much like flamethrower on Jolteon, he's gonna be one of my little, uh, one of my kind of pocket surprises. He's like, I'm gonna save. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to remember if there was a Pokemon of mine that if I take them to move from member, they could learn like, like a Fire Fang or anything it would be so nice right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was. I I think there was. I think I don't want to say Gyarados. Maybe it was Nido Queen. It might have been Nido Queen. Let me see. Okay, Poduck gonna level up soon. Dragonite's 32, so he's getting there. Still needs some needs some work with his move set. I mean, Jolteon's Jolteon. He's ready to go. Okay, so it can learn like Fire Punch, but it's from the Move Tutor, which I think that's the one in the G, like the dojo. Um, I think so. I think. I am not 100%. I'd have, I'd have to look up where he is because he's not the one that teaches like all of the super moves. He's he, he's standing in a corner somewhere. Uh, let's do some quick searching here in our last few minutes. Sure. Let's see. So what is Nido Knight at? Mm -hmm. So close. If I get it to 35, that's Toxic Spikes. I don't think I'll be able to get it to uh, Poison Fang, which that would be really nice if I could get him to Poison Fang before the Elite Four, but that would be good. That's gonna happen. I don't think that's gonna happen. Sure. Um, let's see. Let's see. Headbutts in the forest, as we know. The elemental beams are in Blackthorn City. Uh, that's the oh, fret starters. Oh, yep, yeah. that's for the starters. Uh. Frontier Front has a bunch of things, but I don't know where that is. I don't think we can get get to that. I don't think so. Yeah, because that's where you're going to get the punches and such. All right. I type in Frontier Front and I just get a bunch of crypto stuff. So I didn't realize that was a crypto coin. It is. Huh. Okay, then. You know what? Uh, considering what I would have expected, uh, it might be the better 
answer to get in a Google search. <laughs> True. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. It is. It's west of Olivine. Uh, you can't get into it until you get to the Hall of Fame. So. Damn it. Yep. All right. That's unfortunate. But yes, that's where uh, the move yeah. tutors are for that. Okay. Well, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think in my last little shack here, I want to see how strong the Pokemon are inside of Victory Road. Because we might be getting to a point to move into there. I think so. We can probably <clears throat> probably hit that up in the next uh, in the next episode. The next one. Mm -hmm. But let's just dip a toe in the water. See what we got. Worst sure. case scenario. Need or not dice. No. <laughs> <laughs> um... <clears throat> And just as long as we don't wander too far. Mm hmm. And so it looks like here. you're. Oh, that's right. My Jirachi was in here. That's true. Oh, no. Oh, oh. I've made a terrible mistake. That's okay. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I can get this. Okay. Because <laughs> it's a it's a water ground. Yep. <laughs> I'm a flying Pokemon, so it can't use ground on me. Mm hmm. And I have ice moves. Yep. That is a slash, though. So, so a according oh, to... Oh. Ooh. According to Bulbapedia, uh, your, our levels are going to be between 32 and 36. Okay. For wild Pokemon in this area. 32 and, and 36. So yeah. might need a little outside of the cave, just because... Because yeah. mm -hmm. I already know I now have Garbite and Jirachi in there. Yep. So, got some uh, got some beefy friends. I've got some beefy boys to take through there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm not having. Yeah, that might be a good one to have Wizados run through because it's got Dragon Rage at least too. True. But Nido Knight might just have to get the EXP share slap on it and mm -hmm. see what happens. And let him uh, kind of ride it for a little bit. Yeah, I can only have to ride that out until I think of who else for her to fight. Mm -hmm. But I will say for now, I think that's going to be a good spot to call it. I think so. Made some good progress. Nita Knight and Wizdos are actually able to fight on their own at right now, so that's mm -hmm. good. I've almost got most of mine over 40. Yeah. So, which 42 is the rival strongest. Mm -hmm. Which, so, so if, we're getting close. If we get one more good training session in, we'll probably be able to resume and hopefully knock through this and maybe the Elite Four. Not in one run. But no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a couple episodes before the of the Elite, Elite Four, Four and getting to it because that's that is gonna be you know twenty po twenty five Pokemon in a row, twenty five twenty six Pokemon. But yep, we can do it. So we can do it. Mm -hmm. I believe we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we might just have to, again, do one more training thing when we get to the actual Elite Four, depending on what their levels are going to be. I haven't even looked them up yep. yet. I think they max out at 50 or like 52, I think, is where that maxes out. Let's see. Since we're here. Mm -hmm. um, there it is. The, Elite the Joto Four. Elite Four. That's just showing me what they... Doesn't say specifically what they have at this point, but uh, I can find it. Give me a sec here. Mm -hmm. It's definitely uh, going to be beefy. Elite four. Here we go. Um. So yeah, looks like starts at forty, mm -hmm. with the final ones being at fifty. That sounds right. So forty to fifty is the range. Mm -hmm. And it's, then it's going. Because the final, final battle against Red is 80, so... Well, and that we still have to go through, all, we'd have to go through all of Kanto's... It, yeah, no, we're... Our goal has always been get to the Elite Four and then take stock, so... Yeah, and then mm -hmm. from there we can determine if we want to keep going or if we want to start a new run... Right. ...after a breather or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, okay. So, yeah, um, let's uh, wrap this up then. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Uh, I know we're going to have a one more session of just training but we appreciate mm -hmm. you guys hanging out uh if you got any weird stories you want to share in chat we'll uh, talk about it like we did tonight on some 
weird tirades that we went on. Absolutely. There's going to I mean, these have been fun. We get to oh, uh, yeah. we get a lot of wild chats, so. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, and then anytime they miss an episode, where can they find it? You can find the archives at uh, youtube.com slash at Alhan one. Uh, videos have been mostly going up on Wednesday evenings at this point, mostly because Tuesday rolls around. I'm tired and then I forget that I had to do a thing. So they're happening on Wednesdays. Um, Regardless, uh, all the back archives are there. Feel free to look for the playlist uh, that called Pokemon Nuzlocke, and you can start from the beginning if you should like. There we go. Otherwise, we'll probably be back next Monday, same time, 7 p.m. CDT to mm -hmm. about 9. Um, I'm trying to get another stream up during the week for drawing. It's, yeah, things have been wild, but I will yeah. try to... F I'm, I'm hoping to get something like that. Otherwise, Alhan, is there anything you're doing this week? Uh... Probably you're going to see some music or some other content along those lines this weekend. Uh, we've got some uh, some DJ shows that are coming up and uh, I might be might be involved in some of that. So uh, maybe some streams there, some some video work done. But uh, keep an eye on my Twitter. That's uh, where I uh, kind of announce those things. Uh, usually I try to get them on Instagram, too, but I don't always remember. So All Twitter right. for sure. Well, with that uh you guys have a great night enjoy your week and we'll see you all next time yep have a good night everybody